finally finally type this out i sincerely hope that this works right now awesome it's working what are people this is bharat here welcome back to yet another video with the code monk channel so in this video i'm going to be discussing with you guys on exactly how do you do and perform the firebase ml vision with the flutter application so what does ml vision do this is a concept with respect to the firebase where you can actually do a lot of different things you could do a barcode scanner you could do a fingerprint reader all of this cool st stuff is possible but it wasn't possible until recently there, there was a change with respect to that and it has made it possible i tried a lot of different versions to make this work and i sincerely hope that this works for you as well and in later releases as well so that's what i'm going to be talking about in this video i'm going to be taking you guys through this one concept called as image labeler wherein you could just click on an image and you could just find what the image is actually going to be for you it could be this is actually categorized as a desk or it could be a table it could be a chair so all of these different things are the labeling that you have going to give it to an image so that's exactly what you're going to be doing in this video i'm going to be taking you guys to the entire flow on how do you connect your firebase how do you bring your firebase ml vision plug in into your application and all of that cool stuff is going to be happening right away so make you stick to the end of this video and i'll take you guys through the complete process and we'll finish this video out as early as possible awesome so this is what i'm going to be doing with you guys today i'm going to be teaching you the basics of what and how do you connect to your firebase much faster so i'll just take you guys through the entire flow brisk flow i'm not going to be talking more about this so I, i am assuming that you guys know three important things the first one is that you understand how the concept of flutter and how the basics of flutter works you understand state and stateless widgets and all of that sort so i'm not going to be touching at that part at all the second is about the concept of firebase i hope you guys also know the basics of firebase and what is it used for and all of that sort because if we're connecting to the firebase before we begin this entire application the third is that i'm going to be explaining the code to you guys even though i'm not going to be completely typing it out and all of that sort but i'm going to be explaining the code to you guys in detail so you don't have to worry about anything of that so i'm just directly jumping into that the first thing we going to need is to actually create a firebase login and use that to register our application to the firebase all right let's jump directly to firebase or google.com which is the most important uh, that we need you just get to click, click get started i'm actually already logged in i already have a lot of applications that is actually working i've already created a ml vision demo which is the application that i am going to be using but to make this thing very simple i'll just create a new project for you guys so just create a new project let me call it ml vision demo 2 i'm going to calling it as demo 2 it's up to you guys whatever you want to call it just continue this everything is going to be there select an account i already have my default and I mean, my android monks is going to be my account so i'm clicking this thing it's going to take some time uh, let's wait for it to complete the most important thing that we need to know and why we are going to connect it to firebase is because all the machine learning models so for example let's say that you are trying to label an image which is going to be a simple pen so whatever models that is going to be resembling a pen is going to be stored in firebase so we definitely need the firebase connection so that our application is going to be very very sure that this is what i'm going to be talking to and this is what is going to be happening to my entire application so that's the basics of that so as soon as you're done just click continue and you're going to be taken through this page this page is where you're going to connect your application so there's two things to this one is the ios and one is the android i'm i'm just hoping that you guys know all of that sort i'm going to be registering my android app in a moment uh, i don't want to do ios app for one simple reason lots of you guys have put in comment section that this is not that you guys don't have a mac os to work on so i'm just assuming that you guys all have an android system which is nothing but a windows system let's go and type the uh, name of the package very important go to your package that you created here and as soon as you go to your android since you can register your android go to your so as soon as you open your android go to your app your source and you can open your main manifest so the manifest the top line is a package name which i have created for my package i'm going to be using this package and we're going to go here click this and just that's enough for us that's just register your application it's going to ask you to download a simple google json file that is also very important so download this config file you just download it and you pick that up and you go here this is actually the usual stuff that you do and if you guys are not aware of all this thing i've dropped a link in the description where i take you guys through the complete flow of firebase in much simpler terms you can just take that and use that if you want to register your application so but anyway the flow is really same now download your google-services-json and put it inside your app source file so this is the important folder that you need to put it and as soon as you put it you go back here and you click your next and it's important that we add our firebase dependencies so it, this is these are usual steps that you do every single time you set up firebase so in case if you find that i'm taking this super fast 
which I am, I know that I understand that I am, uh, you can definitely check out this link that I've put in the description. This, this is going to be the basics of Firebase. I've set, I've explained how you set up it for Flutter and it's also got a lot of use. So hopefully you guys do find it useful. So in case you don't want to, it's a very simple process. Just take your, just copy this and paste it in whatever folder it is asking you to paste. So first thing is is asking you to paste it inside your build.gradle file. So where do you find the build.gradle? So this is going to be your app and this is going to be build.gradle. So this is exactly where you're going to paste our file, which I've already done. So I've, I've taken it and pasted my first API dependency here. And I also put the apply plugin hyphen Google, Google hyphen services. So these are two important files. I've followed this step and I've done that. Next step is going to be to take and put it inside our app module build.gradle. So these are just basic setup things again. Copy your uh, Firebase Analytics 17.2.2 and take it and put it inside your source and inside your build.gradle. So inside your app source build.gradle, you will put those files. For example, uh, let me show you. You'll put it inside here, so you put, you put your class path files inside your apps, app app.cradle and we're done with this. So we've done the, both the, both these steps and it's important that we've done it cleanly. And as soon as you're done with it, you might be having a basic uh, a Flutter project that is going to be opened for you. It's going to be the same example, you have a simple demo project that is present. Just run it once and as soon as you run it, it will automatically connect with Firebase and you will be completing this step. This is going to be again the basics. Again, I put that in the description, check it if you want to. Let's jump straight into the next step. Awesome, we have done these two steps and we've also done the most important way of connecting to Firebase. What next? It's time to start looking after at our pubspec.yaml file, which is very, very important, which I've been doing so far. So we're gonna be including two important, uh, most important uh, plugins for this video. The first one is gonna be the Firebase ML Vision. So this is the Firebase that we're gonna be using and this Firebase ML Vision is going to give us a lot of classes. The first important class that you're also gonna be looking at is your image labeler class. So you should take your Firebase hyph underscore ML underscore vision and you're going to be plugging it as a latest version the one important thing that you need to understand is that you always should be using the corresponding firebase analytics or the firebase connection plugin in your app gradle so in this app gradle file i have i showed you guys that i'm going to be using my 17.2.2 even though the latest version is 19.0.0 i'm still using the 17.2.2 because this plugin does not still have the updated version of with the 19.0 so just understand that one single thing understand that you are going to be using this but again you're going to be using the older version of firebase ml for your specific to your android uh, that's it you have done this the next one is going to be the path provider which is another important uh, plugin that i'm going to be explaining to you guys why we need it and cloud firestore if you need cloud firestore because if you say for example you are going to take this and put this data that you've gotten from your uh, image labeler and put it into firebase database you might need cloud firestore plugin but i just used it for some time i didn't find i didn't want this project to be so long to explain to you guys so I haven't used it actually in my uh, main.dart file, but these are two important plugins that you're going to require if you're doing this cleanly. So Firebase ML Vision and your path provider. Awesome, let's jump directly into our main.dart file. I'll explain to you guys what are the important uh, important plugins and classes that you're going to be using. The first important class is going to be the Firebase ML Vision and we're just going to include the dart file. Now, why do you want to include the dart file? As you can see uh, in this example, now let me start, fire this thing up and show you guys what happens so why exactly am I going to be making use of the image labeler? I'm going to be showing you guys this ex this app right now. So this is the app that looks like, doesn't look anything uh, exceptional, just a simple image that shows up on the screen. And when you click on it, you will see that it's something's loading in the background. It's starting to starting to label what the image is. It's, it's an amazing thing, right? That's what you saw in the first part. So how is it going to be possible? It's going to be possible by making use of this one class called as image labeler that this Firebase ML vision dot dot file gives. It's amazing that you don't have to understand so much about your Firebase. You don't have to understand much, much about the machine learning, but still you can leverage the classes and simple free to use tools to do something like this. So I'm going to be showing you guys what and where you can actually place it and make it work. The first thing that you have to understand is that this is possible only if you are going to be giving it a file image. 
Now, what is the major use of this image labeler? The image labeler is going to take a simple file, which is going to be a JPEG or a PNG file, which is an image file, and starting to compare it with its available machine learning models using the Firebase host. And once it is done, it will start giving you guys what are the possibilities of uh, maybe it could be a desk, it could be a, a table, all of these possibilities, it's going to throw it back at, throw it back at us. So how are you going to do that? First thing first, we need to share an asset to that uh, application. So that application is going to right now have a simple desk as a PNG file. So what I've done again is that I've gone to my uh, lib file and I've also created a simple assets folder. And inside the assets folder, I've created two things now. I've created table.jpg, which is going to be the image that you're going to load. And for ex another example purpose, I have also had a PNG file. So now one thing that you're going to do next is go to pubspec.yml and add that as part of your assets folder. So assets, you add what are the two files that you have right now. For just for the example purpose, I've added two different uh, file extensions. One is PNG and JPEG. Now, time to show this to our user. So how do you show that to the user? Very simple again create a simple stateful widget and as usual have our scaffold as the body, scaffold as the entire application's root and return that the return this image as a file back to the user. So these are the basics of uh, how you do your scaffold and of that that we've seen so much about in this uh, in this channel. So just go to your image list and I'm actually returning a simple asset image. The asset image is going to be returning the table.jpg here and also the next important thing is I'm going to be converting this asset image into a file image which is going to be the important core idea behind this uh, video. Now there are two important things that you can do here. One is that you can directly hook this application into a camera API which again you have seen in this video within this channel. Just look at that video and if you want you can directly hook this entire thing into a camera API. So when you hook it into a camera API you could have much more control over the images that you can take. Just use your camera, take a picture and you start getting the image labeled there. But for this example I also want to share with you guys how how does the exact image labeler works? It used to work in a different way previously, previous to 15.0.0 15 .0 versions. But recently, it has got a lot of things have changed because what this image labeler and the Firebase ML vision is starting to do is that instead of always depending on something like a Firebase to hold your models, they're downloading it locally into your application or in your phone for temporary purpose and starting to do the comparisons in your phone, which is much more faster also. So in, in if you want to do that, you also have to have a simple local image in your Firebase application or it could even be a simple mobile application, mobile phone that you have. So you need to have your local file present inside the phone just like how you have it present inside a part of a gallery and all of that sort so when you have to do that you need to still push this asset image that you have outside the application inside the phone so that's what you're going to be doing we're creating a simple file called as get image from assets so I've, what I've done is I've created a simple folder called as picture slash underscore a file flutter underscore vision which is the folder that I'm going to be putting my images and I'm going to take it from my lib assets path and I'm going to just going to create a directory and start writing the file as a simple so I'm just going to write it as an in, in important file inside the device so I have an asset outside now I have an asset inside the phone as well so when you have both it's easy to just path pass the path of this file and you're going to be ready and start comparing so that's going to be this con conversion part that's going to happen here this will usually happen directly in case of a camera uh, plugin if you use the camera plugin this will automatically happen but for just for the sake of showing you guys how exactly this works i have done this thing so that's going to be the whole idea behind this so have this uh, loaded and you're going to have the path in our hands immediately so you're showing the user and on top of that we're going to show the uh, get the path where the file is pushed inside the device and we're going to start labeling our images so how exactly are we going to label so the first class that you're going to be looking at is going to be the firebase vision image so we have a firebase we have a local path which is going to be the image inside the phone or in the example inside an emulator now you take a, take this Im image from image path and convert it into a firebase vision image so this firebase vision image is going to be doing a lot of things for us you can even leverage the uh, the your your uh, OCR which is nothing but your optical character recognition you could even use the barcode scanner you could use a cloud image labeler you could use a local image labeler all of these classes are going to be exposed as soon as you have a firebase vision image so that's the first part we are doing here we are creating a simple object of the firebase vision image and using that you're going to be invoking the firebase vision dot instance dot image labeler so as soon as you do that part you're going to just load it inside our image labeler and using that object we're going to start processing the image 
previous to the 17.0.2 version we usually had something called as a process label which is which was a little bit more complex because you need to take extract the with your image and start giving it a list of array of data of pixels which was much more complex back then now what they have done is if they have upgraded it to a simple method called as a process image just to pass your vision image to that and as soon as you pass your vision image that it's going to automatically start labeling your uh, your image so this is going to be the next line so this is important three important and lines and as soon as you get that it's going to return a list of labels which are going to just show back to the user so that's the whole idea behind image labeler so as you can see here I've, I've also done something here which is called as a confidence threshold of 50 and everything of that sort I'll explain to you guys in, in a single uh, minute now now this is the application that's going to render to us just click on it as soon as you click on it it's starting to label it's saying it could be a desk and it says that it could be next it could be a table it could be a pattern which is true it could be a pattern also and start labeling a lot of things here but you will also see that to some extent a lot of these are not exactly the exact matches now is this is it the shelf i don't think so it's a shelf because shelf would have multiple racks and a chair chair also might be you can consider as a chair but not exactly as a chair now as you can see as you, as you uh, you can see that that is it's giving me seven possibilities now what i can do next is that i'm going to be controlling the percentage of correction here so i want to see how perfect this image is going to be now i can next thing i can do is that i can increase the percentage to 75 percentage of uh, perfection when i do that i'll just load this image again and i click on this and it start giving me much better optimized results here it's going to be comparing it to a 75 percent of correction confidence which is confidence threshold and as soon as you get the confidence threshold you can see that it gave me only three possibilities it told me it could be a desk it could be a table or it could be a pattern so that's it now i can also go ahead and lower this to a say for example a 25 percentage of accuracy and as soon as you load that you can see that it starts throwing me a lot of variables, varying values, which might not be the image, I mean, label that I'm looking for, but it's possible that you can control the confidence with which the models are actually accurate in your example. It's saying shelf, it keeps, it'll keep saying it's a pattern, it could say it could be even a football, chair, all of these sort, but it's not possible, right? So it's up to us to control the percentage of confidence that we want to, which is again a simple class. You just have to pass the image labeler options class and control the confidence threshold there. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's a toy, which is not, it's not, it's not a toy. So yeah, something like that, it's saying a shoe, very bad confidence threshold. So as you can control this, you'll see that your accuracy keeps increasing as you go up and up, but there's only certain possibilities that are only certain amount that you can reach. 75.75 is a very good confidence threshold, post which it will become a little bit, it, it cannot find a pattern at all because not every image is categorizable. So that's the whole idea behind image labeler. I've put the entire code in my uh, in my blog article, it's in the description, check that out. You can take this, you can use it for whatever you want to use it and let me know what you guys think. In the upcoming videos, I'm also going to be talking to you more about your optical character recognition, your handwriting recognition, all of this cool stuff that is possible with the Firebase ML Vision's latest release. And I'll also discuss with you guys what's more coming up and we'll have a blast with the Firebase ML Vision series. So that's it for this video. Hope you like this video. You know what to do, smash that like and subscribe button if you like and share this content with you guys. So let me meet in the next video with something really cool with Firebase ML Vision and uh, until then, have a super awesome day.